Hey everyone, we're Red Donkey Projections. I'm Eric, and unfortunately Lucas could not make it to today's episode, so I will be going solo. Today we will be filling out our bi-weekly Senate election predictions. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Um, so surprisingly, there have been quite a few seat flips and um, decrease of margins for both the Democrats and the Republicans. So let's get talking. Um, let's fill out the safes as we always do. Let's start with the Democratic seats. So we got Oregon, New Mexico, and then we got Minnesota, Tina Smith, and then we got Illinois, Dick Durbin, Virginia. This is Mark Warner's. Gene Shaheen's seat is essentially safe, and a lot of the East Coast usually for the most part does um, lean democratic or in fact is the safe democratic seat so let's go to the republican safes we got idaho wyoming south dakota nebraska oklahoma arkansas louisiana tennessee and west virginia that should be it um i think yep i got all of the safe republican seats all right Let's dig a bit deeper. Let's go to the likely Republican seats. We can start off with Alaska. This is the same margin as we had in last episode. Let's take a look at their polls. As we see, Sullivan is up by 13, which is pretty good for him. But before, we did see him slipping, plus 5, even. Sullivan plus 2. So it wasn't looking that good for him. Um, for now, I will keep it as likely but it's kind of a likely safe at this point. This is Alaska. There's not much of a chance for a Democrat, Al Gross in this case, to win this seat. Um, let's move on to our next likely seat, um, which is Kansas. As we know, Chris Kobach did not win the primary. Uh, Roger Marshall did, and he is the more favorable one than Chris Kobach. As we know, Kobach had a lot of scandals and he was not picked, and Roger Marshall will do well against Barbara Boyer. She does not have that much of a chance. Let's move on to our next um, likely Republican safe state. Here we have Mississippi. This is Espy versus Hyde Smith, and maybe this time she is slipping because um, of the high African American turnout that is happening right now. Let's take a look at some polls. Mississippi, let's find Mississippi. There it is. Hyde Smith plus five, most recently. A bit more for Hyde Smith, um, plus eight. But in perspective, May 13th, Hyde Smith had 28 points. So we did see this pattern gradually that her lead is decreasing a lot. So um, the reason I'm not putting it as a lean or anything lower than the likely is because Mississippi does have a quite a conservative foundation. So we'll probably go to um, Hyde Smith anyways. Uh, let's take a look at Alabama right next to Mississippi. This is Tommy Tuberville, the Republican, trying to win out against Doug Jones, the Democrat, in Alabama. That may seem, seem surprising, but Doug Jones um, did win because Roy Moore had a lot of scandals, and Doug Jones won by quite a little margin. He did not win by much. And despite the millions of dollars coming into his uh, Doug, Doug Jones's campaign, Tommy Tuberville uh, won the primary and is endorsed by Donald Trump. So this is going to the Republican. This is Alabama, also pretty conservative state. Let's move on to South Carolina. This is Lindsey Graham, the incumbent the incumbent facing off against Jamie Harrison, the African-American Democrat, who is actually doing quite well in the state like South Carolina. Let's take a look. South Carolina. Look, for Lindsey Graham and the state of South Carolina, Lindsey Graham has been in the Senate for quite a long time. Well, he's only up by three in this poll. And then August 6th, he was even. And then August 4th, it was plus one, plus four, and plus two. So not too good for the Republican in a state like South Carolina. Um, what Harrison needs to do here is increase turnout and kind of increase or decrease the Republican margins. We made a video on this. So let's go back to our map. And after South Carolina, let's go on to Kentucky. 
This is Senator Mitch McConnell's seat. The Senate Majority Leader, quite unpopular, and he is Republican. He is facing off against Amy McGrath, a moderate Democrat, and also McGrath is doing quite well for a state like Kentucky. Let's take a look at some polls. Kentucky? Where is Kentucky? There it is. Look, McConnell plus five, McConnell plus three, and McConnell plus two. Not looking too good. And these polls are pretty recent, August 6th. August 5th. They were in this same month. So McConnell does have to step it up here and kind of launch some more ads in Kentucky. And the reason why I'm keeping all three of these states as likely is because, yes, they may not be doing that well in the polls, but all of these states have a pretty conservative base. And it's very, very low chance that a Democrat could win this state anyway. All right. Let's move on to the likely Democratic seats. There are definitely less of them. We have Colorado. John Hickenlooper ran for president, did drop out pretty early, but gained quite a bit of rec recognition. He is up against Cory Gardner, a staunch Trump supporter, which is not looking too good in the state of Colorado right now. Colorado is swinging more to the left in general, so Hickenlooper has a pretty good chance of winning this seat. Um, let's move on to our next likely Democratic, which is Michigan. Gary Peters is doing very well in the polls against John James. He will likely win this race. All right, let's go and move on to our lean states. Let's start with the Republicans. And I think there's actually only one. Yeah, it's um, Georgia's special election, I believe. Or actually, no, this is likely. Georgia special election is likely Kelly Loeffler was involved in scandals and she kind of, yeah, she resigned. And um, Doug Collins is likely to going to win the runoff and, you know, Georgia, a pretty Republican area, will vote for Doug Collins, which is, which leaves Georgia special as a likely area. Yeah, and I think that's all for the lean Republicans. Um, not too much to talk about. Now let's move on to the lean Democratics. And these states right now are probably going to make the difference in this whole race. You'll see. Let's start off with Arizona. This is Mark Kelly's seat versus Martha McSally. And as we know, Mark Kelly is doing very, very well. Let's, and actually, I was looking at a poll, and surprisingly, if, yeah, a new poll shows it even. This is the first even poll that Mark Kelly had in a while. In fact, maybe it's the first one, because look at these previous polls. I don't like this pollster. Let's take a look at Emerson College, a minus rated pollster, August 11th. Mark Kelly up by 11 points, Kelly up by five points, by 10 points, by 18 points. So he is doing very, very well in this state. You know, Mark Kelly is a pretty favorable candidate. You know, he was an astronaut. He is a moderate. Um, his wife, Gabby Giffords, has political experience and will be speaking at the Democratic National Convention. And on the other hand, Martha McSally caught up in a lot of scandals, not elected righteously, according to the people of Arizona. So that doesn't look too good on her part. But this poll is really surprising with the evens. But I think this was just an outlier. And we do think Mark Kelly will take the state in a lean margin. All right, let's move on to Maine. Here we have the least popular um, Senator Susan Collins at the moment. Um, she is the incumbent, but she is not really that much. She, is, she isn't that liked. And Sarah Gideon is doing very well. She used to be the Speaker of the House of Maine. Quite a bit of experience. She's doing quite well. Let's take a look at some Maine polls. Let's try to find Maine. There it is. Look, in a state like Maine, <clears throat> with a Republican incumbent, Gideon plus five, Gideon plus five, Gideon plus eight. So she is doing pretty well. I'm not really um, happy with this uh, pollster, but we can use this one and this one, getting a plus seven. So Collins, not anywhere right now does Collins have a lead. I do think Sarah Gidding will take this um, state in a lean margin. So let's go on to the tilt Republican states. And there's um, two, yep. Um, we have decided, um, this is the flip from last uh, episode. We have decided to put Montana at the moment as tilt Republican. We have the double Steves here, as I like to call them, Steve Bullock and Steve Daines. 
Steve Bullock, the Democrat, very popular governor, ran for president, gained a lot of recognition. Um, and then we have Steve Daines, who is who did work in the Montana um, political areas. And also, there are a lot of ads being um, advertised about you know supporting Steve Daines with Mitch McConnell and um, Nikki Haley on them and Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz and Lindsey Graham. So those ads probably has been really successful. And also. Let's look at the polls. Not looking too good for Steve Gaines. Let's try to find Montana. There it is. These past three polls have all been in favor for Steve Gaines. And Bullock has kind of lost his lead a little. But this is going to be quite contested. And you might think, well, isn't Montana have a quite uh, conservative foundation, just like Mississippi and Alabama and South Carolina? Well, the thing is... Um, the people of Montana like to split ballot. For example, in 2016, they voted for Donald Trump, but voted um, Steve Bullock as the governor. So they do like to split ballot, which is why Montana is going to be a pretty contested race. And let's move on to our final tilt um, Republican area. And this might be surprising, but I think it's time to put Georgia as a tilt Republican area. Um, Ossoff, the Democrat, is doing very, very well in the polls. Let's take a look. Let's find Georgia. So look, at it today, Ossoff is up by two. He is back. Um, let's look at this one yesterday. It is even against Ossoff in Purdue. So I, I don't really think it's reasonable to put it as lean anymore. Um, which is why I think it's it's time to move it as tilt. This will probably change, and um, it, it might change for better for the Democrats or worse for the Democrats. We'll have to wait and see. And I just realized I forgot quite a few states. Um, let's jump back to Texas. This is uh, John Cornyn's seat. He is likely to win this state. And North Carolina, a lean Democratic state. This is Tom Tillis versus Cal Cunningham. Let's take a look at some North Carolina polls. They're all in favor of Cunningham, the Democrat. Where is North Carolina? There it is. Look, Cunningham plus five, Cunningham plus three. And this this is his pretty low point. Um, he had at one point Cunningham plus 16 in August 10th. So this is pretty recent. A minus Bolzer puts Cunningham plus three. So he is doing very well in the polls. Tom Tillis did get elected in the red wave year. We do think Cunningham will get the state back. And the last state we have is a tilt Democratic state, and this is subject to change a lot. Iowa. We have Joni Ernst versus Teresa Greenfield, and this is very contested right now. As we know, Iowa is a swing state. It did vote Republican, um, and actually it's quite a bit to the right for Donald Trump. Well, let's take a look at some polls. Let's find Iowa. There it is. Look, these past three polls, in August, added yesterday, Greenfield plus three, Greenfield plus two, Greenfield plus four. These past few polls have been in favor of Greenfield. And let's take a look. Three A-plus polls only had Ernst up by one, one, and three. And now, more recently, Greenfield is up by two, four, and three. So Greenfield is doing um, pretty well in a state like Iowa, which puts it as a tilt. This is also subject to change a lot. Well, this is our final map. The Democrats do regain the majority, 51 to 49. This is going to be a pretty close Senate election. It's a very colorful map. Well, thank you everyone for watching. If you like this content, please hit subscribe. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And we'll see you in our next episode tomorrow. See ya.